Hi, my name is Ed Nolan and I'm an A-level psychology teacher and in our video today we are going to be looking at the free will and determinism debate in evaluating approaches in psychology. Um, this video is relating to the educator A-level psychology, not spiceology, but psychology, it'd be nice if it was spicy, but anyway, um, psychology um, specification, but can be applied to other psychology courses. First thing I'd like to do is look at some exam questions based on our specification. If you have a look through those exam questions, this is how it's going to be assessed. If you can see, they range from identifying a strength or explaining a strength or and a weakness of one of the approaches to being able to compare and contrast to being able to discuss the worth of approach. So we will look at these exam questions in more depth at uh, a later time. But what I'm showing this is just so you understand where this fits in that you have to be able to um, evaluate at least two or more strengths of each of the approaches and that you've got to be able to do that by making the point, explaining the point and evidencing them. But you've also got to be able to look at how two different approaches relate to one point um, as well. So let's have a look at the points that we're going to look at. First point we're going to look at, and that's for this video, is determinism and free will. Um, we'll also look at how the nature and nurture debate relates to each of our approaches and um, whether that's a strength or a weakness, um, whether they're scientific or not, and whether that is a strength or a weakness, and it can be both. Um, applications, do they have successful applications? And if it does, what does that tell us about the approach? Um, we'll have some evaluation points that are unique to each approach, and we'll also look at the debate of reductionism or holism. But today we're going to look at determinism of free will. Now, here we have Derek Chauvin. Derek Chauvin is a Minneapolis police officer of 18 years, who on the 25th of May um, 2020 was involved in the arrest of George Floyd, an African American. Now, as part of that arrest, he kept his knee on George Floyd's neck for 8 minutes and 46 seconds. Now, in doing that, we know from eyewitnesses that George Floyd was not particularly resist, um, aggressive in his resistance to arrest, and that other police officers near him had suggested that this was not a good idea and was not correct behaviour. However, also, George Floyd himself had protested and said that he couldn't believe. However, Derek Chauvin, ha Chauvin had decided to keep his knee there until, unfortunately, he led to and the death of George Floyd. Now the question is, why did he do this? What will cause this behaviour? And is he accountable or not for it? And that's what we're going to have a little look at in this video as we apply the idea of determinism and free will. Okay, let's look at the philosophy of free will first. Here we have Baron Holbach. He was a French um, philosopher, or French-German philosopher, um, in the 18th century. And he came up with the idea that um, in our life we have a series of events, and he called them chains, series of links in a chain. Um, and they, as they occur, when we get to a certain behaviour, we behave as a result of those chains, and that we do not, we could not behave in another way. Let's illustrate this with the dominoes. I particularly like the double five, that's a kind of double number, yeah, it works for me. Um, so double five will fall over. And the reason it will fall over is because the dominoes in front of it are falling over. And that actually, as those dominoes fall, if it got to the double five, it can't decide, well, I'll fall sideways or I won't fall at all. It is inevitable that that domino will fall. In the same way, as we carry out behaviours, it is inevitable that we will behave in a certain way. So if I told you um, a joke, um, let's say uh, my brother bought eight legs of venison the other day for five pounds each. Do you think that's too dear? <laughs> yeah, and that's, if I tell that joke right now, I could have done nothing else because all of the events in my life had accumulated to this point of me telling you that joke. It's one of my favourite jokes. Um, you, you can tell it somewhere else if you like. Um, some of you might not want to. But, so, it had to happen because of the events in my life. Those events determine what was happening. And I had no choice. I had to do that. That's a philosophical idea of this idea of no choice. But of course, if there's no choice, there's no control. And actually, control is an illusion that we feel that we make choices and have control. 
because it is those past events that have led to that. So in essence, our behaviours, we're on, like a puppet on strings, that it's our past events that cause us to behave in a certain way. And of course, as psychologists, we might say environment, we might say biology. So let's have a look at determinism in psychology. That's a philosophical viewpoint. Well, psychologists, or at least psychology on the whole, takes a scientific approach to explaining human behaviour. And taking a scientific approach, we are, I agree with the ideal of cause and effect. The idea that one thing causes another one. So, for instance, you know, uh, heart, low levels of serotonin lead to depression, or high levels of serotonin lead to anxiety. The cause and effect are there. So if we take that, we must take the idea of determinism. Determinism is a core aspect of science. That actually we can make predictions and we can establish the chain of events of our natural world or us as people. Now within psychology, some psychologists talk about biological determinism, that actually our biology determines or causes our behaviour, that we don't choose to behave in a way that biology determines that. Um, with hormone levels, with genetics, with all kinds of things. Another factor is that our environment actually leads to our behaviour. The chains of kind of stimulus response actions occur there. I'm a, quite a fanatical Everton supporter. I obviously wasn't biologically programmed to be that way, though maybe high intelligence and good appreciation of football. But my father was an Everton supporter. Maybe I was conditioned. Okay, so I didn't choose to be an Everton supporter. That was a fact of my environment, my family. Another idea is this idea of psychic determination, determinism. This idea that our unconscious mind determines what we are, coming from a psychodynamic viewpoint. That actually we behave in a certain way um, and that reason is held in us. So for instance, if I'm particularly messy, um, why am I choosing to be particularly messy? Or is there an unconscious drive to be messy due to some kind of potty training when I was younger? So let's have a look at Derek Chauvin and say, well, OK, this man carried out this act that caused the death of another man. And in, not an innocent, but innocent man. He didn't deserve to die. So why was that? As psychologists, we would say there has to be a reason for it. It doesn't just, just happen. And that could have been his biology. It could be that his frontal cortex is not development, developed and he doesn't show any empathy or he's you know, linked to aggression. It could be his environment, his training as a police officer. It could be that he had been conditioned to be away. It could be he was conforming to the wishes of the officers around him, though we know at least one of them had protested about it. Or it could be that there was some unconscious drive there. We know that he knew George Floyd. They worked in the same nightclub, him as an off-duty police officer, the others as security. Um, maybe there was some pent-up aggression there that had to be released. Um, maybe he had been bullied as a child and he kept his neck on that foot as a kind of release um, um, for what had happened to him as a child. Whatever it was, one of those things, those ideas could have caused or determined that he did that. OK, now some psychologists actually say, well, look, determinism is one thing, but we have free will. We have the ability to choose and make choices. And that determines our behaviour. But actually, this morning when I had my cinnamon chips for breakfast, I had chosen my cinnamon chips for breakfast. I hadn't just been following. I've made a conscious choice as I opened the cupboard. Do I have cinnamon chips or do I have porridge? I made that choice. And one group of psychologists that follow this are positive psychologists. They're definitely in the free will view um, there. They don't say that every action, everything we do is a choice, but they say that choice is part of what we do. And through choice, we can make our life better. So if we look on one side, we have our free will side, which is the positive approach. On the other side, we have what's called hard determinism. These are the people who say, yes, all of our behaviours are determined. And these are our biologists, our behaviourists and our psychodynamic approach. But there is something called soft determinism. And this is proposed by some cognitive psychologists. And this idea that, yes, our behaviour is determined. Our behaviour is determined by our thinking. But in CBT, we have the option or the ability to choose the way we think. There is some scope for some free will or choice there. Though limited, it is there, and the more we use it, the more we can have it. And that is part of um, CBT, and that's called soft determinism. It is not full free will. B 
because they say that our behaviour is determined by our thinking. Uh, but there is some aspects that we can take control of or limited. OK, so determinism and free will. Good, bad, which way does it go? Well, first of all, if you're deterministic, um, you can make predictions. You can say, well, because this thing causes that, because that determines this, because your serotonin levels determine your mood, we can make a prediction. And if we can make a prediction, we can change something. We can make a treatment. That is why determinism is central to science. Um, it can make predictions and treatments. Whereas free will is too airy-fairy, it's, it's too broad, it's too ambiguous in order to be useful, in order to make predictions. So determinism really works, um, predictions. This idea of blame as well, because something has determined what you have done, whether it's biology, environment, unconscious, you cannot be blamed for what it is that you do. And this can be a good thing, because if you uh, know somebody who suffers from severe mental health, there's nothing worse than sort of saying, pull your girls out together, come on, get some control, get a grip, when they can't. They just cannot do that, okay? And it removes that blame on them. And so that helps them. Um, nothing worse than blaming yourself for something you have no control over. Whereas free will will actually say, you, if you can do something, there is some blame here. OK, so let's we'll look at some other aspects. First of all, determinism is seen as a pessimistic view of human, meaning you have no control, there's nothing you can do about that. Whereas if you agree with free will, then there is an optimistic view, the idea that you can take control. Huh? So, for instance, determinism, you are the puppet strings, whereas having free will, you can, it enables you. It allows you to say, well, actually, I have some choice, so I can do something. And that's an aspect of things like CBT. But also we take this idea of responsibility. OK, if it's deterministic, if you're determined by your biology, if you work really hard if for a test, a psychology test, you get a really good mark. Well, hey, that was just your biology and your environment that did that. Or can you say, well, no, actually, I determined that. I had some self-determination. I made a choice to do that. I want to take praise or responsibility for my high mark. Likewise, with a low mark, if you chose not to do anything, determines and say, well, you couldn't have chosen any other way. That's just how it is. Whereas um, free will would say, actually, you're going to have to be held accountable for what you've done. Responsibility. So determinism is pessimistic. It doesn't allow you to take control, which free will is optimistic and enables you. Determinism says that whatever happens, you don't need to or cannot take responsibility for that, which free will gives responsibility. Let's go back and have a look at our Derek Chauvin um, and kind of relate some of these points to, to this. So the first one is, is predictions. Yeah, because if we take the deterministic view, we could have predicted he would behave in a certain way or predict he will behave in that way again. And so therefore be able to prevent that or change that. OK, it's pessimistic, this idea that he couldn't control what he was doing. Um, he wasn't enabled him to control that, whereas free will said, well, he could have controlled that. So it's pessimistic. However, responsibility is an issue here as well, because if his behaviour was determined by his biology, his environment, whatever, his unconscious mind, he therefore is not responsible for what he has done. And this is where we suddenly get a little bit uncomfortable. We're saying, well, yes, I get the idea of science and determinism, but actually part of that human aspect, part of what he did, means to say that actually he kept his foot on that man's neck. He needs to be held responsible for that. OK, and so therefore determinism removes blame, whereas actually actions need to be accounted for. So what we can see is, is there is strength to being deterministic, but also real limitations there as well. So what have we learned um, today? Um, we have learned that you have to evaluate um, the approaches that you can use free will and determinism to do that, that the biological, behavioural and psychodynamic approaches 
are deterministic. We've learned that the positive approach um, agrees with the idea of free will or goes along with the idea of free will. That the cognitive approach takes a kind of middle ground of soft determinism. The idea that yes, our behaviour is determined, but actually in some aspects we can actually take a little bit of choice or a little bit of control. We have learned that actually being deterministic is a positive thing in the sense that it is part of science. We make predictions. It allows us to um, help people and make therapists. Um, and also it blames people when it is um, unhelpful or not effective to blame them when they have no um, control of what they're doing. However, limitations are that actually it's pessimistic. It doesn't allow us to take control. It doesn't enable a person to help themselves. And also, it removes their responsibility from their own actions. So I hope you've enjoyed the video um, and you've learned something about free will and determinism. And hopefully I will catch you for the Nature Nurture film.